Helsinki was founded in 1515 by Gustavius of Sweden, conquered in 1809 by the Russian Empire, and is now the intellectual and cultural center of Finland. It's home to half a million Finns and the Leningrad Cowboys, 10 men with real long shoes and real long hair, who make up probably the worst rock and roll band in the world. I'm Tom. I'm Paul. I'm George. We are two, two other guys. guys. We are coming from America. We are, we are American, American rock and roll. We are American rock and roll band. Maybe you can hear it from our accent. This is perfect American accent. You keep saying you got something for me. We have to born to be a Leningrad cop. Who said so? <laughs> Mama. You have to be a brave man. You have to be rich and healthy looking. The band leapt to fame in Aki Kurismaki's cult road movie, Leningrad Cowboys Go America, in which they try to take the American music scene by storm, but fail. We are not any good. If we, if we were the best rock and roll band in the world, we would call, our, call ourselves the best rock and roll band in the world, but this is the worst. Study this book. We were given a book by our manager and he said this is rock and roll book study it and we're still trying to learn it the lessons seem to be paying off with over 50,000 turning up to see the cowboys perform with the red army ensemble <laughs> having sorted out the musical part the cowboys are now looking to live the rock and roll life but we love beer most of us will love it, and there's one who don't like, but the rest of us like. Let's go now. With Finland, a land of heavy drinkers, and the band never wants to pass up a pint or a marketing opportunity, the Cowboys have now launched their own Leningrad Cowboy Lager. We just had an idea that it would be nice to have our own beer. The first rock and roll band in the world to have our own beer. When night fell, our crew were expecting a tour of the town with our pointy-shoed friends at the helm. What we got was one of the Leningrad Cowboys' notorious pub crawls, or as they put it, how to get stinky on the drinky in Helsinki. Jean-Paul, um, I want to apologize. I, I know I was kind of rude uh, to you. It's okay. I, I forgot. No, no. I know. I, I know. I was rude. Okay. I forgive you. Um, speak about something else. No? Serious? Yeah. Serious. <laughs> In Europe, every country has a special monument to remind them of a great moment of their past. In France, for example. We have the palace at Versailles to remind us of the French Revolution. And in Britain, you have Big Ben to remind you when it's time for the tea. Oh, you mean tea time? Exactly. Yeah. But perhaps the strangest national monument of all is in Belgium, where they have the Pissing Boy. And the Pissing Boy is there to remind all the Belgian men that they have a penis. Jean-Paul. Oui. What? First, that is not true, and mm. second, I already told you that you cannot say penis mm. on British TV. You can say pissing, but not penis. Exactly. Ah, yes. Well, how does a pissing boy to piss without a penis? It's impossible, because if you have a penis, you can piss, but if you have not, it's English as French. No? Belgium's most popular tourist attraction is the mannequin piss. The origin of this little boy is a little obscure. Possibly he was condemned by a witch to go on pissing forever. Or he was the boy who pissed out the fuse on a bomb. Whatever the explanation, since Louis XV of France started a trend, everyone has been desperate to dress him up. Here he is as a young Elvis Presley. In fact, there's a whole museum dedicated to the little lad's costumes. He's our most celebrated monument. His name is Mannequin Piss, and he has 560 costumes. 
It's a very ancient tradition, which has been going on since the 17th century. Just as Britain has changing of the guard, Belgium has the changing of the piss. Carl here has been performing this ritual for 17 years. I love my mannequin piss. Touch it and you will have trouble. My mannequin piss is very proper. He always looks after his clothes and he never pisses on them. And now the hat. Well, there you have it. A Belgian man who's fallen in love with a pissing two-foot statue. So wouldn't you rather be dressing a woman? Oh, yes, but women are too dangerous and far too expensive. And now, my British chums, it's time once again to look at the wonderful world of Poupou. Here at Eurotrash, we are very proud of our Poupou reports. Few programs offer you such comprehensive coverage of European caca. From toilets to turds, we are always there first, bringing you the real poop scoop. And for our next story, we have a Eurotrash poop exclusive. As we take our camera and we go up inside the anus, and in the anus we find something Jean very Paul, strange. Jean-Paul, you, yeah. you cannot say anus on the British TV. You can say anus or rebilis, but you cannot say anus. You cannot say anus in the... No. British TV. You mean that we can go and stick the camera into the anus, but we cannot pronounce the word. It's strange. No, it's crazy, completely crazy. I don't understand that. I'm sorry, everybody. Excusez-moi. If you're ever in Munich and the queues for the loo are too long, there's only one place to go, the Potty Museum. Herr Manfred Clauder is the world's number one and probably number two potty collector. Whatever your toiletry needs, Manfred has the perfect place to drop your bombs. During Second World War, an uh, English gentleman demonstrated what they were thinking of Hitler in shitting on him, and that was good. Of the 8,000 that are on display, pride of place goes to this little number, designed to fit between women's thighs. And they made great joy to the women who used them. And you even see a mirror in it so that women could look at their sweetest point from this perspective. Very erotic and nice. And if all this toilet talk has left you bursting with enthusiasm, you don't have to look very far to relieve yourself. If uh, there are too many people who want to use the same toilet, I just uh, tell them they can take one of the putties without problem. Right, do we have any volunteers? Ah, uh, yes. Ha, 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 you. Drop your trousers now. <laughs> Meanwhile, in one Dutch museum, they've gone potty over poop. We haven't dealt with the problem of uh, the exhibit smelling because shit smells and uh, we don't want to cover that up. So when you come in this exhibition, you smell shit. There are 50 types of turds on display, from moose poop to elephant droppings and some steamy pictures too. There are uh, 17th and 18th century tiles and uh, as you can see, people uh, were crapping uh, everywhere. With some exhibits, though, you get a real eyeful. Here you see a wall with all uh, behinds of animals and one human being. And uh, you can uh, look through the, uh, the behinds, and then you see uh, the head of the animal. And uh, when you look through the hole of the hippo, this happens. It farts. <laughs> And there's also a lot of smell, so, well, it's not very nice. The animal poop is displayed in glass cases, but when it comes to their own offerings, the Dutch want to get as close as possible. This is a typical Dutch toilet. You can look uh, behind you and see what you have produced. And uh, in other uh, European countries, they have those toilets and uh, the shit disappears. So you can't look what you have made. 